What's up, YouTubers? This is Mr. Monkey Swag. And what you see right here is everything that I picked up this uh, April. And this all came from my LCS. This all came from my local coin shop. Okay, so let's start with this. This is a... Uh, this is a Canada... A uh, twenty dollar silver coin. It commemorates the Calgary Winter Olympics in 1988. As you can see right here, Calgary Winter Olympics. So yeah, it's a twenty dollar silver coin. It has a diameter of a forty of uh, forty millimeters, and um, and it has a purity of. 925 silver, which is sterling silver. So yeah, the diameter is about the same as a silver eagle, except the coin is thicker because of the uh, 925 fineness in contrast to the silver eagle's 999 fineness. So this is a thicker coin than a silver eagle, but the diameter is the same. But yeah, it still contains an ounce of silver in here. So it contains one ounce of 925 silver. So it's just a thicker coin. So, yeah. As I said before, it commemorates the... Um, it commemorates the Calgary Winter Olympics. Uh, there are two ver varieties of this coin. There is a variety... That has edge lettering. And there is a variety that lacks the edge lettering. Out of the two. The variety that has the edge lettering. Is the more common variety. Uh, the variety that has the edge lettering. Is only worth spot. Um, however. The variety that lacks the edge lettering. Is worth hundreds of dollars. Unfortunately for me, I got the one that has the edge lettering, so it's not worth much. But, I mean, I got this from the junk silver bin, so I can't complain. So, as you can see, mine mine does have the edge lettering. I know it's hard to... Yeah, I think you can make it out on, on here. Yeah, you can make it out a little bit. So, originally this coin was actually part of a larger coin set. This was originally part of a coin set that consisted of 12 coins. In that coin set, there are 11 silver coins and 1 gold coin. Each of the coins in that coin set has a different design celebrating a... A winter Olympic sport. So yeah, I got the one with the hockey. But there are other coins in that set that celebrate other uh, winter Olympic sports. Like uh, skiing or snowboarding or whatever. But yeah, I got the hockey one. So yeah, there are 12 coins in that set. 11 silver coins and 1 gold coin. So yeah, that set commemorates the Calgary Winter Olympics. So, I mean, I did see some other coins from that 12 coin set at my local coin shop. So next time I visit the coin shop, I'll probably pick up another coin from that set to add to my collection. But for now, I just have the hockey guy. Okay. Here's another cool coin that I got from the junk bin. This is a German 1874E one mark silver coin. So for any of you guys who are into history, judging by the date, this coin was produced during the German Empire. Uh, during the early years of the German Empire. So the ruler of the German Empire... During this time is King uh, Wilhelm the First. So yeah, King 
King Wilhelm the First was the reigning uh, emperor of the German Empire during this time period. So he has a one mark silver coin. It has a diameter of 24 millimeters. And it has a purity of 90% silver. So which makes this coin about the same size as a US quarter. So yeah, this thing's about the same size as a quarter. Um, so yeah, 24 millimeters um, in diameter and 90% um, silver. So you see, you see the date 1874 E. You if you wonder what the E stands for, uh, this coin has an E mint mark. So yeah, it has an E mint mark, and the E mint mark me uh means that this coin was produced at the Saxony mint. So yeah, the E mint mark stands for the Saxony mint. Um, that's where this coin was produced. So yeah, you see a heraldic eagle on here. And you see one mark. So it has original toning and patina. So here's a so here's how much I paid for this coin. I paid uh I paid about seven dollars for this coin. Um according to um if I was to grade this coin, I would grade it as very fine. So this coin is in very fine condition. So yeah, as I said earlier, I paid only $7 for this coin. When I, so when I looked up on the NGC database, as well as the Krause catalog of, of world coins, uh, I've read that this coin retails for... $20 in very fine condition. So I paid only $7 for this coin. But this coin retails for $20 in very fine condition. So I got a great deal on this coin. And it is a really nice coin. Unfortunately, I'm going to send this off to a friend. So I'm not keeping this coin. Actually, a lot of the stuff I picked up this month of April. I'm not planning on keeping. But yeah. Here's another cool coin I got. This is. This is a. British. Ha half crown. Yeah so this is a British. Silver half crown. Uh, s produced during the reign. Of King George. The fourth. Of Great Britain. So yeah, this is a British half crown. As you know, most British coins uh, this old are 925 sterling silver. As you can see right here. So yeah, you see King George the the fourth on the obverse. But here's the thing that's amazing about this coin. Look, just look at how much wear this coin has. Look how worn out it is. It's amazing. But the thing is, I mean, you can only see a trace of the king's portrait, King George the Fifth. I mean, George. I mean, King George the Fourth. And on the reverse, there would have been a shield or a coat of arms, but you can barely see it. But amazingly, what makes this amazing is that the date on the coin is still legible. You can still clearly see the date on the coin. It's from eighteen twenty. So, if you're going to ask me what I would grade this coin, I would grade it as, uh, I would grade it as poor one. So, for any of the guys who know about grading coins, poor one is the lowest grade possible a coin can receive. So, yeah. Poor one is the lowest grade possible for a coin. And believe it or not, um, so yeah, here's the thing. Um, a lot of people call coins that are graded poor one, they're known by collectors as lowball coins. So yeah, a coin that grades poor one is known as a lowball coin. Um, 
So here's the thing about low ball coins. For a coin to be a low ball coin, it has to have as much wear as possible while still retaining a legible date. And this coin fits that criteria. It ha it has so much wear uh, that you know it's amazing that it still has a legible date. So since it's so it has so much wear on the coin, but it still retain that legible date. So yeah, it's low ball coin, which grades poor one. But here's the thing about low ball coins that I think you guys would find really surprising. Believe it or not, that low ball coins are actually some some low ball coins actually sell for more money than an uncirculated coin. Believe it or not. So you might ask, why is it that? You know, you see these worn-out coins selling more for more money than their uncirculated counterparts. Well, here's the thing. So, as I said before, low-ball coins, some of them can sell for a lot of money, like hundreds of dollars. This is especially true with low-ball Morgan dollars. I mean, low-ball Morgan dollars are very popular popular like morgans that have a lot of wear while still retaining that date are really popular like i've seen low ball morgan dollars sell for hundreds of dollars more than than a morgan dollar that's in uncirculated condition with the same date and mint mark so yeah so as i said before you might wonder why these low ball coins actually sell for more money than uh, than an uncirculated coin. Well, here's the reason why. These low ball coins are actually much scarcer than people think. So, most of the time when you uh, come across a coin that has this much wear, you most likely see you most likely see that the date has worn off. So yeah. As I said before, a lowball coin has to have a lot of wear, like grading to like poor one. It has to have so much wear, but it still has to have a legible date. So, I mean, when you see these worn out coins, so often you see the date getting worn off, you know, th that, you know, dates just, just rubbed off. It's not there anymore. So that's why lowball coins command a premium. Because they're scarce because um, low ball coins like this are scarce because you rarely see a coin with so much wear still retaining that legible date. Because when a coin gets severely worn, one of the first parts of the coin to get worn off is the date. But to find a, a date still being legible on such a worn out coin is pretty scarce. Which is why you see a lot of low ball Morgan dollars graded poor one by either PCGS or NGC. You see you, you see those coins selling for hundreds of dollars. So this is a niche market, you know, for these coins. These coins do have high demand. I don't know if this British half crown would sell for a lot of money, but I know a low ball Morgan dollar would sell for a lot of money. So I know a lot of stackers tend to avoid slick coins. Well, next time you you look into the dealer's junk bin for either a Morgan dollar or a Peace dollar, you got you got to you know uh, look at those slick coins in a different light because you know who knows that Morgan dollar or that Peace dollar might be a low ball that you could send to PCGS to get graded and maybe make some money. But yeah, so this is an example of a low ball coin. It grades poor one. Okay, here's another coin I got. This is a 1962 Franklin half dollar proof coin. And I bought it for only 20 bucks. Because, I mean, they made a lot of proof Franklins in 1962. So, yeah, this is a very common coin. But still... You know, nothing's better than a Franklin half dollar uh, that is a proof. I mean, I really love these old proof coins. You know, you know, I, I've always thought Franklin half dollar proofs were so cool. 
So yeah, they're cheap, but I mean, they're beautiful. I mean, I try to make it a goal to just, you know, every time I go to the coin shop, I should just pick myself up some, you know, Franklin half dollar proof coins. I'm not talking about the mint state coins, the BU coins. I'm not talking I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about a proof. So when I pick up a Franklin at a at a local coin shop, I try to pick up a proof coin. If it's cheap like this one. Oh yeah, and after I bought the coin, I scribbled my name on it. But just like the German coin that you sh I showed you right here, uh, I'm not going to be keeping this Franklin half dollar. I'm going to be sending it off to a friend. So, yeah. Really beautiful. Uh, these old proof coins. But here's the thing uh, I, uh, you might notice about these proof coins. Uh, they don't have that cameo contrast that you see on uh, modern proof coins. A lot of these older proof coins don't have that cameo contrast. So basically the entire proof coin is just mirrors. You don't see any frosting on this coin. So, so that's interesting about the older proof coins. That's because the minting technology back then was more primitive than it is right now. So that's why you don't see many proof coins with that cameo uh, contrast. So... Um, so yeah, man, the proof coins that you see nowadays are called uh, cameo proofs. The proof coins back then, like this Franklin half dollar, these are called br brilliant proofs. Basically, in a brilliant proof, basically it's just mirrors. You don't see frosting at all. So yeah, that's what a brilliant proof is. That's what this Franklin half dollar proof is, classifies as. But you know, the modern proof coins that you see from the U.S. Mint... Nowadays, from the Perf Mint, uh, you know, with the cameo contrast, those are called cameo proofs. Hence why when you, hence why you see NGC and PCGS grading those modern proof coins with the ultra cameo designation, because they're cameo proofs. But, I mean, occasionally you do see Franklin Half Dollars with the ultra cameo designation, but those are very rare. Uh, well, not very rare, but those are scarce. But for the most part, most Franklin half dollar proofs are just cameo proofs like this one. Well, not, not cameo. I mean brilliant proofs, not cameo proofs. So yeah, there are Franklin half dollars that were struck as cameo proofs, but those are pretty scarce. Most of the Franklin half dollar proofs are brilliant proofs like this one. The the very few Franklin half dollars that you do see struck as cameo proofs are, you know, they cost a lot of money. They have a premium. But this one is struck as a brilliant proof, so it's cheap. Uh, that's, you know, how you would usually encounter these Franklin half dollar proofs as, you know, just brilliant proofs. But that's enough of me blabbering on. Um... So here's another interesting coin. This coin depicts Genghis Khan and is struck by Mongolia. So yeah, this was issued for Mongolia. It's a Mongolian silver 1000 Togrog. So you can pause the information right here. So yeah, you can pause. So yeah, it's in this Lilton uh, plastic holder. This Lilton company, coin company plastic holder. Here are the specifications. So it contains one ounce of 925 sterling silver. So, so yeah, on the obverse you see Genghis Khan. So, yeah. So here's some interesting facts about the uh, Mongolian Empire. I believe the Mongolian Empire was the second largest empire in the world. Uh, only the British Empire is larger than the Mongolian Empire. So the Mongolian Empire, the size of the Mongolian Empire, uh, exceeds that of the Roman Empire, the Persian Empire, and the Macedonian Greek Empire. So yeah, the Mongolian Empire is bigger than the Roman Empire, the Persian Empire, and the, Mon and the Macedonian Greek Empire. It is bigger than those empires. So yeah, 
the Mongolian Empire is massive. Basically, the Mongolian Empire stretched as far as China all the way to Eastern Europe and Russia. So yeah, that is a lot of land. So yeah, the Mongolian Empire is huge. So you might wonder why the Mongolians were so successful in warfare. Well, the Mongolians were known for their cavalry, and they're also known for their archers. So, the Mongolian cavalry, they're armed with uh, spears, and they're also armed with a special sword called a Turkish Mongol saber. So, you know, you see a lot of, you know, as we all know, when people associate Weapons with cavalry, they think of sabers. Well, that influence came from the Mongols. I believe the Mongols were the first, uh, were the first, uh, ar army to have a cavalry that used sabers as a primary weapon. Because before that, most cavalry soldiers used straight edge swords, but the Mongols used curved swords for for their cavalry. Um. So, speaking of the archers, the archers use a special bow called a composite bow, which can shoot arrows that pierce that pierce through armor. So, yeah. So, the Mongolian cavalry and the Mongolian archers are really deadly. And the Mongolians were known for their ruthlessness. Basically, Mongolians don't take prisoners of war. Instead... When a, Mong when a Mongolian army, you know, uh, invades a city, they either demand the city to, uh, to surrender immediately, or the Mongolian army would massacre the entire population of the city. And, obviously, most of the cities surrender to the Mongolians w without question, because they know the Mongolians are ruthless. They will kill everybody. So yeah, you see Genghis Khan, the first uh, ruler of the Mongolian Empire. Um, so any, if any of you guys know who Marco Polo is, you know Marco Polo uh, is one of the first Europeans to visit China. And the ruler of China at, at that time when Marco Polo visit, visited is uh, Kublai Khan, who is the grandson of... Genghis Khan. So Marco Polo served under the court. So Marco Polo served under uh, the court of Genghis Khan's grandson, Kublai Khan. So yeah, it's a really beautiful coin. You see proof like finish. So so here's what I paid for this coin. I paid I paid only uh $22 for this coin. This coin has a mintage of seventeen thousand dollars. No, no. Uh, excuse me. This coin has a mintage of only seventeen thousand coins. So yeah, it's a this. So this is a bullion coin, but seventeen thousand is a really low mintage for a bullion coin. Um. So from what I've read online, this coin retails for forty five dollars. So I made quite. A, re a return on this coin because I paid only $22 for this coin, but this coin retails for $45. So, yeah, really good deal on this coin. 17,000 uh, mintage limit. And here is another coin that I picked up it is a Chinese panda coin. I'm sure we all seen these. MS seventy, but I got a really good deal on it. I paid only fifty dollars for this panda coin in MS seventy. You know, Atmex, uh, Atmex is willing to buy these coins from people for like, I went to the Atmex website. Uh, they're willing to pay seventy dollars to buy, uh, to buy back uh, two thousand eleven. Panda in MS seventy condition, they're willing to buy these coins back for seven for seventy dollars. But I bought this coin from my LCS for only fifty dollars. 
So if I was to sell this to Atmex, I would make a $20 profit. Because Atmex are willing to buy these back for $70. For $70. I bought this for $50 at the LCS. So I made a, so I had a really good deal on this as well. The only problem about this is that it has a bunch of milk spots. You know, a lot of stackers hate on the Royal Canadian Mint, like the Maple Leafs and the Br Britannias. You know, the Britannias and the Maple Leafs, they're notorious for milk spots. But I think, in my opinion, I think pandas are just as prone to milk spots as Maple Leafs and Britannias. Every panda I've owned has developed milk spots, in my personal experience. Every panda I've owned had milk spots. So you see some milk spots right here, right right here, right here. Yeah, really bad milk spots. But that's alright. I mean, I still got a good deal on this coin. On this MS-70 Panda. So, you know, I have a really close relationship with my local coin shop. You know, I always have conversations with the owners. The owners are really nice guys. Um... So here's their business card, Absolute Diamond and Gold Buyers. So they're really nice guys. Mr. Zeke also visits uh, that coin shop very often. I think, believe it or not, actually Mr. Zeke actually works at, at that coin shop occasionally. But yeah, the, the owners are really nice. So they gave me a freebie. So I got this for free. It is another Canadian Olympic coin. But this one's copper nickel, not silver. So, so let's talk about this coin. Um, it so you see these Latin inscriptions, Citius Altius Fortuus. So in English, that translates as faster, higher, stronger. That is the motto of the Olympics. So I like the Greek uh, design of this coin. Um, so, on the obverse, you see a goddess. You see the Greek goddess of victory, whose name is Nike. So, yeah, this is the Greek goddess of victory, Nike. So, you see the goddess Nike awarding the torch of victory to a young athlete. So, yeah, I really like this design. Sure, it's copper nickel, but, I mean, it's free. And not only that, it's very beautiful. I know I shouldn't be, you know, handling it like this, but I mean, I, I didn't pay anything for it. So actually, so yeah, technically this isn't a coin. This is actually a medal because this is a medallion because it lacks a face value. But yeah, I know this video is taking too long, but yeah, it's really nice of them to give me this free gift. Um, but yeah. So yeah, please like, comment, and subscribe. Peace, YouTubers.